Good morning, my dear students. We are now going to study the basic course in physics, starting with the understanding of the first module titled as units. Uh, what is uh, what are these units? Why, why is it required? How we go about it? What is the importance we have in physics? All those things we will discuss now here. You all know that science is itself is the inquiry into the truth of the nature and it's working. Whatever is happening around us, all the phenomena that are happening around us are observed and inquired into why this is happening like this, why that is happening like this and so on. And we try to get a reason for that, developing a theory behind it. And we put our theory, whatever concept we put uh, in explaining that uh, phenomena, we put the theory also again to test on other matters of similar nature or try to simulate them naturally and try to find in the laboratories also, thus verify it whether the theory is right or wrong. Thus we try to understand every phenomena that is taking place in nature. This process is a, a continuous process that takes place in science and every aspect of the physical nature, the nature that is happening and this phenomena that is taking place around it, with it are being inquired into. In this process, if you are observing the phenomena regarding the plants and their growth and their various varieties, we call that as botany. Similarly, we have the animal uh, kingdom and its nature, its workings, phenomena involved with it. We call them as zoology and things like that. You know various branches of science there. In that essentially, we have again one of the most important things what we are now heading to is what is called the physics. Physics deals with the uh, observation of the physical world and directly obviously appearing uh, phenomena like why the seasons are happening, why a body is moving and if it is moving why is it moving and how is it moving. Trying to understand various involvements of the change in the motion of the objects taking place there how is the planetary system moving, how the sun is rising only at the sun in the east, how the sun is rising only in the east there and how is he uh, sitting only at the west, what is making the seasons take place so regularly here and what is making for the, for the ecl eclipses to happen in the nature, how are the stars located, from that what is there when we talk with sound comes, what is the sound? How is it that we are able to listen to that sound? What is contained in that sound? What are the properties of this sound? Energy, we call it now. Similarly, when we are able to see, how is that we are able to see things? What is meant by light, which is responsible for the uh, observation of any object? Like that, if you go on inquiring into every aspect of the physical world, obviously visible to us and we call it as a physical world and trying to explain those things, physics plays a very important role in the beginning itself. It develops a, a theory beyond our vision when we are able to see certain small things which are appearing in front of us. By seeing what is what I mean by seasons happening there, we can think of the motion of the planets also. When we see the when Newton has seen the apple falling down to the ground. He formulated that there is a phenomena, there is a force that is involved in bringing it down there, attraction is there and he explained this and tried to extend this even for the uh, motion of the moon around the earth and the planetary system around the sun. Like that, the physics makes a very important role in the beginning itself. In that too, in whatever is observed, if it is to be reported properly, correctly, what we are able to see, we will be able to say correctly what it is, how exactly it is. To make this observation understandable exactly, we have to have an exact measurement also. You have to measure every aspect of what you are able to see in some form or the other and give a reference to it and say this is what is what. That's why this physics has been 
uh, termed as what is uh, one of the exact sciences we say it tries to give the measurement accurately for example if you, if you see if a, a, a plant is growing you must know how much it is growing in length so you have to be able to measure the length of the plant exactly so measurement like that becomes very important the topic on units is concerned with that aspect of the physics that is measurement in physics we measure many things that we take place that that we see there there is a material the object is there it has got a color we have to measure its color say we have to say about its color how it is say if you say it is black how black it is in black there can be different varieties there can be less black more black and so on perfect black lamp black and we call it so the color is one aspect then its physical shape dimensions how length what is its length what is the breadth what is the depth how much is its weight what is contained inside is it very heavy or light what is its density in some other words if you say like that you know there are many physical aspects which you have been accustomed to measure in reporting a particular observation this is done exactly possibly only if you understand what is meant by unit whenever ever since the observation has been made from the days you are also whenever you want to say anything you have to compare it with something else and then say you take for example a, an object like this and another object besides this if you want to say about their length you know we say this is shorter this is longer that means the length of this object is more than the length of this object so this sort of a comparison comes how exactly is this longer than this this is very difficult to be answered at this stage unless you have an exact measurement for the length here so like that a standard has to be developed for an exact reference for any aspect of measurement so for every aspect of measurement if you want to measure length you require a standard like that if you want to measure the mass of a body contain matter contained in the body you require a standard for that if you want to measure time you require a standard for that if you want to measure the speed of a moving body you require a standard for that if you want to measure something like a force you require a standard for that like that yeah, there are so many physical quantities as we call them which are measurable each one of them needs a standard for the measurement to be referred such standards are what are known as units even in those early days when science has not been developed in this direction in this way there was a day when we were measuring the uh, length with the length of an arm with the length of a palm like this we have words used for that we use the length with the size of these four fingers we have the length of the thumb these are taken as standards in those days when their exact measurements were not available as that they were to some extent all right but they were as you know it is not very exact because somebody's arm may be longer than the other somebody else so arm's length means whose arm's length is a question again therefore these standards have to be again standardized in such a way that everybody can understand them and put them into order that's one aspect of it so what are the uh, things which require the standards we call them as physical quantities so the first thing to be understood is what is meant by a physical quantity this physical quantity means all those things which you can name as a physical observation which can be given a name a definition for its observation is called a physical quantity now for example we have mass is a physical quantity length is a physical quantity time is a physical quantity speed is a physical quantity force is a physical quantity density is a physical quantity if you go on naming like that many things are there energy is a physical quantity and so on like that you can go on naming like that a numerable number of physical quantities are known today with the advancement of science most advanced as what it is today so all these physical quantities require units each one should have a separate unit for itself so how many units should be there like that how develop these units then people thought in those early days let us decide first what is the basic involved basic content in all these physical quantities for example you take length 
length means it is a distance between two points that's what you have to measure that's what it is it's a distance this is what is called length if two lengths are involved like this one is called length and we call it as breadth then area comes up here area becomes a physical quantity which is developed from lengths it is there because of length if length is not there area cannot be understood similarly even if you take the area in circular form it is the radius that makes us understand how big the, the circle is accordingly we will be able to know what the area is here so length is something which is important to know about the area similarly if you take another thing called volume so we take a box like that there is a volume contained in that there are three lengths involved here there is a length breadth and also depth here this is depth so all these things put together will give a shape called a volume a space is involved in between that is what is called volume so like this the length is a physical quantity from where these things are developed like that it is found that all the physical quantities which are there are developed from certain basic physical quantities so those basic physical quantities they thought earlier that mass length and time are the most important things everything else can be developed in terms of length and time like for example area and volume are given in terms of length you take speed speed is nothing but distance traveled in a given time distance per unit time traveled per unit time so this is the length this is time so distance and time that is length and time have given an idea of what is called speed if there is a lot of speed for a body which is moving it travels a long distance in a short time if it is slow enough speed is very less it takes small distance also long time there so this sort of understanding that physical quantities are made up or can be understood in terms of those physical quantities which have been mentioned earlier they categorize these physical quantities into two things one is fundamental quantities and there is derived quantities we call it. the fundamental quantities are these three the mass length and the time they are they have taken in the old old uh, school of thought that these three are sufficient to be taken as fundamental quantities mass length and time they cannot be expressed in anything else mass is matter contained there is some matter after all the matter has to be expressed as matter only there is nothing else that can be used as a tool to explain about matter here at this stage so they thought something like mass is a fundamental thing that is available everywhere in nature second thing is the length if that mass is to be put occupy some space the minimum thing that is to be occupied is a the length then it can be set into area then it can be set into volume also depending upon how many lengths are involved in that physical quantity coming up there as the area or volume so length is another important thing is fundamental thing we call it which needs to be expressed independently for itself similarly time time is a thing which is not under anybody's control time is always progressive you have to start from some point as zero time from there if you count it may be an hour or a day or whatever it is like so time is another thing which has to be independent to be dealt with such three quantities which need to be independently expressed which cannot be expressed in any other way than this more fundamentally than this is what is or what are known as the fundamental quantities all other quantities which can be derived from these fundamental quantities are called as derived quantities like what all we said here speed force density energy all these things are derived quantities for example take density here density is the distribution of mass in a volume how it is distributed in a given volume is explained by density so density is therefore is defined as mass per unit volume so in a given volume there is a given mass m and if you take say do that m by v you will calculate that you derive this as what is called density so an equation is formulated between the mass volume and density like that density is expressed in terms of mass and volume volume itself is a derived quantity i told you from length so naturally density becomes a derived quantity from mass and length like that every physical quantity that can be categorized and can be expressed in terms of the fundamental quantities are known as derived physical quantities so they thought if they give units for the fundamental quantities for mass length and time 
as standards, fix up some standards for them. All the rest of things can be known in terms of that. For example, you take length. If you take length as unit as 1 meter, then area is equal to length into breadth. This is, that is what area is. Length into breadth. That is what the definition of area. If you do that, area will be having a unit which is a unit of 1 meter into another meter. That means it is 1 meter square. A square meter we call it. So unit of area is the square unit of length. That is the unit of area is derived from the unit of length. So if these units which are given to the fundamental quantities are called as fundamental units and all the rest of the units which are derived from there for the derived quantities we call them as derived units. That way we get units for all the quantities. For example, you take density once again here. Density has the units. Mass suppose is there in, in terms of kilograms and volume is, is a in terms of cubic meters, meter cube. Then we say the unit for density is kg meter per cube kg per meter cube. So, you can define like this. So, once you know the units of the fundamental quantities, the rest of the quantities could be derived. That was the concept with which units have been developed initially. Then that is one aspect. The second aspect is, what should be the units of these fundamental quantities? How to give units for them? That is the next aspect of understanding the units. They thought, unit must be given in such a way that it must be very precise, very exact. If the unit is not exact, any measurement that is expressed in terms of that unit certainly will not be exact. So, based on this concept, they have developed certain system of units which are exactly given some standards for measurement. We have such units earlier and those units are given in what is known as FPS system we call it. This is what is called as the British system. So, in given by the British uh, units, we have for length in all these uh, systems, we will have the physical quantities, the same fundamental ones, the length, the mass and the set time here. So, these are the ones which are given units. Length here it is given as one foot. That is why F comes there, the meaning of it is that. And foot is a standard of length measurement in FPS. Similarly, mass is measured in terms of pounds. It is given with the symbol LB there. It is pound, we call it. This is called foot. This is called pound. But the symbol for that is LB. That is how this system has been developed. Similarly, for time, it is second. We call it as one second. So, length in foot, mass in pounds, and the time in second, this makes a system so that all the developed quantities will have further units derived from these things only in that system. That was one system. Another system also was developed. This is not found very convenient. The figures, the standards probably were not found all that convenient. So, a more convenient thing which can be used more easily is then developed is what is called as the metric system. Metric system we call it. In the metric system, for length it will be meter or centimeter. First we will start with centimeter, then we go to that. We call it as, in, there are two things in this. First we call it a CGS system, then we go to higher system than that. In CGS system what happens is, for length it is the one centimeter is the unit. We represent like that. For mass it is a gram and for time again it is second. What is this uh, length, what is this uh, mass unit uh, here? He is now put here in terms of centimeter, gram and second. Then if it is further updated, up, I mean uh, upgraded, 100 times the center is what, is, is the centimeter is what is called 1 meter. Such system is what is called MKS system. Just it is upgraded from this. Like this 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Similarly, 1 gram in this here, it is 1 kilogram which is thousand times that gram. Second is again the same thing, always. Because second has been the same in all the systems, it has not been different because time is difficult thing to be uh, controlled by various other definitions. It is not a matter that you can hold and say this is time. 
you have to only follow a flowing time time is a flux we say generally so on, how are we getting the idea of the time we are able to get the idea of time because day and night is happening on this earth if day and night were not to happen we don't know what time is at all what are day and nights they are events all the events are possible to happen only because there is time everything happens in time actually if there is no time nothing happens if you eat it has digest time is required if time is not there it won't get digested nothing can happen there likewise for every life to progress for every physical world to happen for everything to take place it is time that is involved rather we are all involved in time in taking do two things likewise the movement of the uh, earth around the sun which is responsible is a one of the basic events because of which we are able to understand day and night on the earth and seasons on the earth that is taken as standard and then from there the second has been designed here we call it solar day earth takes 365 days to go around the sun once that means if you take 360 if you, if you take the time to, uh, uh, taken by the earth to go around the sun divide into 365 parts each part is called a day and that day is again divided into 24 parts we call each one is an hour like that from a large event the smaller event the smallest event a second has been evolved a second is therefore 1 by 86400 times a mean solar day to that time that much it is there that means the from a larger event a smaller uh, time has been identified for a measurement of smaller events here which take place on the earth so like this the second has not been changed in any system they are all same these things are changed there for convenience of measurement there so this sort of a system was there initially fps metric and we call mk system you must have studied these things in lower class i am not going to more details about them here further what the very idea of having mass length and time alone as fundamental units has also not served purpose for long because there are there were certain physical uh, aspects that have been known later on which are not controlled just by mass length and time or which are cannot be, which can be expressed only just by mass length and time for example heat is there you may say heat is a form of energy all right but when you, heat is energy is different and the temperature is another thing different heat is different temperature is different temperature is a feeling that what you have normal body temperature is some we say it is about 98.4 degrees fahrenheit some unit is given there so this unit of temperature does not figure out in terms of mass length and time anywhere it is not therefore either a fundamental quantity nor a derived quantity it is not fundamental because it is not there in this unit. Just, uh, list here what is given there it is not derived because you can't derive the temperature from these things so such new things have been known like that in science we don't know how many such new things may be further known also so many things have been uh, added into the units here which don't come under the unit and this and the, under the uh, heading of either fundamental unit or derived unit so the system started growing any the list of units started growing which are which are therefore to be taken fundamental because they can't come under derived units sometimes another thing is this system british system was popular in british countries probably it is popular even now in many cases and cgs system metric system is also popular in its own way in their own study but when you want to have a knowledge to be developed in all uh, all around development of knowledge all over globally one has to have the communication with the other man who is also doing the same sort of work on the globe at some other part then we need to have a common understanding of these measurements you have your own unit and he express in his own unit there there will not be a proper communication between them so scientists have come together to evolve a set of units which are understandable by all those who are working in science and which have which are to be taken as a uh, commitment for them to express their observations only in those units such a system has been developed and that system is si we call it this is called system international that's why it is called si international system another aspect of this unit is what is this gram what is the kilogram meter here there are certain particular lengths this is a particular length a, a particular length is called 1 meter what is that length you have to decide the length of a 
particular object it is taken as a platinum iridium alloy some standard is taken some length is taken and that length has been exactly preserved in some place it is called as one meter we take meter scales replica of them and then use them here nowadays if something happens to that standard fundamentally if it gets damaged the verification for this meter in future will not be there for example if the fellow who is making the meter scale is a little more business minded reduce one millimeter every time after 10 years the meter will be only this much length so therefore the verification is not possible unless you preserve a standard and that preservation of the standard also should be such thing should not be under the control of anybody it should be in the control of science only once again they must be able to produce anywhere in the globe as easily that's why this new system has taken into all aspects of those earlier systems and their lacunae and have been developed a new uh, definitions for this units here and in that system we are now expressing all our science it is to understand that system which is very important when you talk about units here in this SI units there are seven basic units whether you call them as fundamental we cannot call them fundamental because they are not uh, derived units at the same time they cannot be the only fundamental things for all future to come so therefore instead of calling fundamental quantities and physical their units as fundamental units some basic units have been defined for certain quantities and it is understood that these minimum things are necessary to be known by a scientist to understand his observations in whatever branch of science or technology he is working there so such a system has been developed as SI and it has therefore seven basic units these units are one is meter we call it the meter is unit for length the physical quantity involved is length there the meter is the same meter what we had in the MKS units there only thing it has been redefined so that you don't have to wait for a standard to be given by somebody in some laboratory there you can produce it from anywhere you like that is what meter is the length of meter now is about the unit of the length now is given as the distance traveled by the light in this much part of a second you can read the figure yourself there 299 here 792 here 458 all one number only it's only comma I put there to understand it so such a part of a second second itself is a very small thing and you can understand what this is that distance traveled by light in that time is what is called as one meter why is it given like that it is such a small distance how do you know it because now we have got experiments where we can measure the uh, distance traveled by light easily we know the speed of light now we can we have got experimental methods in physics where you can measure the speed of light because you can measure the speed of light you will be able to understand the distance traveled in that second also therefore that meter has been redefined here in terms of this to be more precise to be more comprehensive to be more easy to be followed by anybody else uh, to reproduce wherever you like similarly for uh, mass we have another thing which is called a kilogram is for mass the meter we show as symbol is like that one meter we show like that for kilogram which is the unit for mass we have the symbol as one kilogram like that one kg we write like that the definition of this kg also is, uh, is, is a matter only again here only we get a, a small problem in the sense you can't put the definition of this kilogram like what you put in terms of um, distance traveled by light there here this matter is after all a matter therefore a standard matter is to be taken to be preserved only so a platinum a alloy cylinder is taken of particular prototype dimensions it has been preserved here in the Paris it is the universal uh, that is international lab for standards units and measurements and there it is preserved and that particular thing is what is called one kilogram anything can be reproduced from there in the same way all kilograms what you are using today in any place are only replicas of that as for the matter is contained inside then we have the third one second is as usual this is the unit for time but this time we have been depending on the mean solar day to define the second as I said just now I was telling you but as mean solar day comes very very after a long time if you get a doubt of to verify verification of one second you have to wait at least for one year 
and then you have to think of the events to be uh, event to be divided into various parts ultimately coming into what is called a second. So this has not been a convenient way to reproduce it. Therefore, the same time, the same second has been again redefined uh, in terms of the crystal vibrations, cesium clock vibrations. There is, you can make a, a, a cesium clock vibrate controlled in the laboratory. The time taken for its vibrations can be measured. The time taken for certain number of oscillations of that cesium crystal there, 133 crystal atom there, can be measured and that is called as one second. All the difference what I am explaining now, here what I said now, you can find in any logarithmic uh, tables books also. I am not going to explain everything. I am giving an idea how they have been redefined here. Only with the uh, point in mind that they can be easily reproduced and will be very convenient standards, in the indestructible standards. So like that we have the fourth unit for temperature. This is uh, Kelvin we call it unit. This is for temperature. Then we have ampere for electric current. Electric current. Similarly, we have candela. This is unit for uh, luminous intensity. Luminous intensity means brightness in a way. Roughly speaking, it is brightness. And we have another unit what is called as mole. It is also for uh, quantity of matter in particles. Uh, we have already one unit for uh, mass that is kilogram, it is also matter only. We have another unit also given here as mole where the matter has to be understood in, in terms of particles like electrons or protons etc and all that. For the time being I will tell you that these are the three things which are very important for us to be known in the first semester here and in the beginning of the understanding of the physics. In mechanics we come across this mostly. And when you go to heat, the temperature unit becomes important. There they will tell you about the temperature unit. The concept will be introduced there. Likewise, when you go to higher study, understanding on the electric current and magnetism, there you will know what is meant by ampere. It is difficult to be explained to you at this stage here because they need the knowledge of those subjects also in understanding those units. Well, for the time being, therefore, I keep explaining all definitions here. They will be given to you at the right place to understand them when you are going to use them. So with this idea of the seven basic units, the SI units have been developed further. There are some more things which do not appear to be as physical quantities. At the same time they need to be measured as units. They are what known as supplementary units. So they come under the category of supplementary units. And these supplementary units are, one is called radian. Another one is called steradian. This is the unit for angle, plane angle. This is also angle, but it is called solid angle. Solid angle. To give you an idea, to tell you, when you want to measure an angle, what is meant by angle? You know geometry very well. When angle is there, you think of two lines like that, and then you think of the angle between these two lines. This quantity which you have shown like this with a curve here is giving us an idea of what is meant by angle there. It is neither length nor mass nor time nor any of these things under category here. It is nothing there, there is no physical matter also is there in between there. Just two lines are there and there is something in between giving you a feeling of a new measurement, a new idea of perception that is what is called as angle there. A geometrical quantity we call it. So therefore, it has been given a supplementary status separately. Likewise, there is angle in the case of steradian also. A steradian is another angle similarly. Like if you take a, a paper, I will show you what, it, what is meant by that. If you have a, a cone like this, if you keep a cone like this, it is a three dimensional uh, object, a cone. You will find at the vertex of the cone here, inside, you will have an angular structure spread in all three dimensions there. This cone is spread in all three dimensions with that vertex as the origin for it. And the angular structure what you look into 
uh, that cone at the vertex is three dimensional angle and that is what is measured in terms of steradian here. These differences also are given in your logarithmic tables. You can refer to them if you want to understand. Anyway, these units are what are now being used as SI units. So, let us make use of these SI units and follow the simple uh, numerical systems given in your uh, module like how to understand the 10 powers. For example, I just now told you, I put it here. If it is 10 power minus 2, the word is generally what is used as centi. If it is 10 power minus 2 grams, we call it as centigrams. If it is 10 power minus 2 meters, we call it as centimeter. Like that you can measure everything in terms of the one particular unit is taken and its 10 powers have been named separately. Similarly, we have 10 power minus 3. I give you explaining with reference to length for you to follow. It is centimeter if you take 10 power minus 2 meters. 10 power minus 3, it is called millimeters. Similarly, if you take uh, 10 power minus 6, it is called as micrometer. These words are things which you have to be uh, familiar with, accustomed with and all these things are given as table for you in your module, you can go through it. Similarly, we have 10 cubed, say for example, 10 cubed grams, say. It is what is called as 1 kilogram. That means it is 1000 grams. We can express this as 10 cubed g like that or 1 kg like this. So, like this, the 10 powers also are very convenient in expression of the units there when you are measuring physical quantities. All those details are given in your book and with the help of those uh, uh, fundamental things given in the book there, you can try to understand how and why a unit is required and how it is to be used in calculations there, how to measure a distance. For example, I give you here, see so you want to uh, find out how the light is traveling, this is a simple example, one, one problem I give you here, say, the speed of light is given to you, it is known to us, it is experimentally measured, how we, and where we make use of these units, I am telling you, speed of light is measured as 3 in 10 power 8 meters per second. We generally give it with the symbol C, of course. You want to find out how much distance it will travel in one hour, say. Distance traveled by light in one hour, you want to find out. Speed is given to you. This distance traveled is given as S is equal to C into T because speed itself is defined as distance traveled per unit time. The speed is a derived quantity from uh, distance and time. So, this is what is given as uh, 3 in 10 power 8 meters per second. And in a given time where t is equal to 1 hour, we want to find out distance traveled. So, you can use this data 10 power 8 and 1 hour you have to put it here. These are in meters per second. This is meters per second and you have to put as 1 hour here. You cannot do this sort of a uh, multiplication because this is a different unit, this is a different unit. You must know how many seconds are there in 1 hour there. Accordingly, you put the equation now. For example, if you take this as meter per second, 1 hour means it is uh, 60 seconds, 60 minutes first and 60 minutes, each minute is 60 seconds. So, so many seconds we have. Then you will know that this second, this second gets cancelled. Because this one second in the denominator is one second in numerator. Then you will have 3 into 10 power 8 into 60 into 60. So many meters. You will understand from this. So, by knowing the unit of the speed, by knowing the unit of time and appropriately applying them, we will be able to find out the distance travelled by the light in the one hour there. So, like this, it should be calculated. That means, units must be known to be used properly to work out like that. So, like this, the units of the speed 
time are able to give us the distance traveled by light. A distance is given there. It also comes in another unit here. In all the units, it is expressed like that. Whatever may the unit be, you also remember one thing. There is what is called a numerical figure and then unit. This is what a unit means. If you say the speed of the body is 30 kilometers per hour, suppose you say, there is one numerical figure and there is one unit. If you say the length of the body is uh, 100 meters, it means there is one hundred of each meter there in that. One meter is multiplied by hundred times. The replica of one meter has been multiplied by hundred times. Hundred such meters are there in that. So a numerical factor will be there and a figure will be there. Numeral unit will be there. You have to remember like this in understanding this. The larger the unit becomes, smaller will be the value that comes here. For the same length. For example, if you take one kilogram, see here in this, the number is one. This is the unit here. The same thing you express in a smaller unit like grams. This becomes 10 cubed grams. Here the number becomes larger than here, whereas unit becomes smaller than this here. Understand? So if you express in smaller units, the numerical figures before that multiplication with that will be much larger. If you take a larger unit, the numerical figure will be smaller. This is another aspect to be remembered. One more thing that you must remember before you go into uh, details of the application of these SI units, it is that in writing SI units also you have to follow a discipline, remember that. You cannot write anything and everything as you like. The units have to be drawn properly. Like for example, if you are writing a meter, you cannot simply write a meter there like that. You must write some figure also must be there just like what I told you, 1 meter, 2 meters, 10 meters. You cannot write plural here. You cannot write meters, 1 meter or 10 meters. You cannot write. You must write only 10 meters. You may, while uh, pronouncing may say 10 meters. But while writing you should not say 10 meters. You must write only 10 meters because it means, as I told you, 10 into 1 meter. That's what it means. You can write the unit in two ways. Either express with the word like this or with the symbol like this. The symbol must be again is a standard one which is applied. You cannot take any symbol as you like. For example, you take force unit. The force unit is, is Newton here. That is the name of the unit. You must write 1 Newton or 2 Newton, 3 Newton like that. You should not write a capital letter there while writing the word there. The same thing when you express in the, the symbols, you must write capital only. You should not write small letter again there. So the names of the scientists are adopted for units certain times. There you require to represent like that. So, following these uh, basic rules, either you write the word or you write the symbol. If you write the symbol, write the capital letter only if it is the name of a scientist. Otherwise, only write small letters. If you write the word, whatever may it be, you must write only start with a small letter there. Without a numerical figure, it should not be represented like that. Keeping this in view, you can try to apply the numerical figures uh, into uh, uh, apply there in the units and then apply the problems. So, uh, you can also observe certain problems which are given there and then work out exercises there. Thank you.